Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today, I'm going to review the ride of the smallest wheel available right now on the market, the Pagode M104. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong Way. All right, first up, huge thanks to my e-wheel for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. If you want to get a wheel like that, feel free to use the link in the description below and my coupon code WRONGWAY for a additional 5% off. I also do receive kickbacks from those orders, so you also do help out the channel by ooh, <laughs> using those links. Now, I've put around 150 kilometers on the clock already on this wheel uh, it's been ups and downs as a small wheel like this uh, of course will be but i think now i have a pretty good idea what it is like to ride this wheel oh let's ride this berm <laughs> here you can see train tracking so well the wheel just wants to stay perpendicular oh, to the surface Anyways, this is not yet the full review with all of the you know, features, specs, teardown and so on. You will need to wait for that in a future video. So subscribe if you want to see that. Riding the Bigode M104 is weird. Just like the M103, its predecessor, it has a six and a half inch rim diameter. And now the size of the tire just changed because we have a new tire, a tubeless off-road tire, which is 11 inches in diameter. So it is a bit more stable, I'm not gonna lie, but at the same time, it's still so much effort to ride it on a surface which isn't perfect. The most noticeable thing is, as I said earlier, tram tracking. So you can see this wheel just follows the right lines on the road. You, you need to be sort of always on the lookout and be a bit loose so the wheel can go a bit left or right because otherwise you will just not be able to control this wheel. Thanks to the very wide tire though, you can lean crack actually quite a bit in turns. And especially if you go slow, this thing just stays so stable and you can just turn on a dime. Woo, 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 woo. So it's a very good trick wheel, very good wheel to learn how to ride backwards. But yes, for a longer distance, and by longer distance, I mean five or 10 kilometers, uh, you will feel that this wheel requires a lot more effort than other UCs at a similar price point. Also, don't be fooled by the alleged power of this wheel and zippiness. This thing is very weak. And I think the optimum speed to ride the M104 is anywhere between 15 and 25 kilometers an hour. And at 25 kilometers an hour, if you hit a bump and you are not loose with your legs, so you don't let the wheel jitter a bit, you will maybe even just, you know, overpower it and fall. <laughs> and on a worse quality road, you can really see the downfalls of the M104. First of all, it jitters you all over. It's not comfortable at all. And if you look to the side, I'm constantly overpowering the wheel slightly if I go onto bumps and such. So I need to be really a lot slower on roads like these because, yeah, either I will jump off from the wheel, <laughs> I will overpower it, oh, <laughs> or something else will happen. So if you don't have good quality roads, in your city, which probably partially is the case anywhere in, in the world. Like really, the same battery size, King Song 16S, 14S. Yeah, it's, it's just plain a better choice. This wheel can reach speeds of 40 kilometers an hour and I tested it, but this is something you only can do on perfectly smooth asphalt while also being ready to not overpower this thing. So you need to very slowly reach this top speed. This thing has, for what it is, I think, a high speed motor, not a high torque motor, although it still packs a punch, but it just can't handle those jitters. So both sideways, you need to be loose 
and front and back you need to be loose because yeah that's uh, just how it is like to ride the M104. The only thing I changed for now to make the ride better on the M104 is the addition of those uh, little um, foam pads on the side because uh, it's very, very annoying to mount this wheel if you don't have those. This wheel is relatively wide for its size. The pedals are relatively high. The foam here is uh, not cushy at all, the, the stock one. And because of all of those things, it's very difficult to just mount this wheel and ride on one leg. It just digs into your shin so much. Even with those foam pads right now on the wheel, I feel quite a bit of strain here in my shin area. Let's check what is the train tracking on this wheel. I mean the pedal dipping. There is definitely pedal dipping, I feel it. <laughs> Especially in longer turns. You can see how the pedals dip. It's not annoying at all. This wheel stays relatively planted. But if you want to have a wheel that doesn't exhibit any pedal dipping at all, this is not the wheel for you. Look at it now, boom. I have it also tilted slightly forwards, so my toes are lower than my um, heels, but I couldn't tilt it forwards that much either because the pedals are super slippery, especially when wet. I don't want to fall from this wheel forwards if I have a bump. I also did some incline tests on this wheel and this wheel performed exceptionally well for what it is. We conquered the 25 degree slope as well as the 30 degree slope, which is insane for a wheel just, just that just weighs 13 kilograms and is as small as it is. Now keep in mind, I didn't jitter at all with the wheel. Now if I would torque it, it would just fly down right away. But with a steady, slow incline, it could still do it, which is very impressive. So now that we are a little bit off-road, you go off-road on this wheel and it's just so uncomfortable and <laughs> you need to constantly watch out not to overpower the wheel. Oh no, oh, it's filthy here. It doesn't also have good mud guards. So fun fact, because this space here is open, the M10 actually sprays mud onto your shoes from the inside and onto your legs. So yeah. Good design choices, good design choices. Ugh, filthy. I don't really understand why they put this tire here. Alien Rides, one of my partners, also offers right away to swap the tire for a street tire. If you order from them, just get it right away with the street tire. I don't think it makes much sense to keep this one. It's loud for one thing, which is a bit annoying. The second thing is when you ride slowly, you can feel these individual, you know, knobs, which is not that comfortable. And there's constantly this vibration when riding. This tire is very frustrating. It's a bit more, you know, maneuverable or less jittery than the original M103 tire. But if you just get a street tire from a scooter, it'll be just a lot better. All right, so now we're off-roading a bit. Definitely the super small turning radius helps uh, to make this experience a bit better but uh, let's see really if you want to do oh, the smallest amount of off-road even with a city wheel just uh, oh you can see small tire doesn't help I think just a small tire that the amateur doesn't allow you to go over curves which is an off-road but you know you know what I mean over routes over stones, all that sort of stuff. And it's fairly easy to clip the pedals too. Oh, also I adjusted my pedals to be a slightly more angled. This helps a lot both with the grip on this wheel because those pedals don't grip that well, but if they're like angled, you hug the wheel automatically a lot better. And yeah, you just control the wheel better. Like this thing, like this isn't effort on a wheel, which isn't the M104, <laughs> but I gotta say that it still is very nice that it has tons of maneuverability. I can go really slow, just creep, and it doesn't sink into the mud because the tire is just so 
Oh, wide. Oh. Why did I go here? <laughs> Literally have no idea. Okay, I gotta give it to it. It's, uh, it's pretty fun to <laughs> do off-roading this way. <laughs> Still didn't overpower the wheel. Okay, I think I need to go do more ha hardcore off-roading to really see if this wheel isn't, isn't really that bad off-road. All right, so now we're doing some more heavy trails. And by heavy, I mean just a usual path in the forest. I can just go as fast as just this jogger in front of me because uh, every bigger bump can just knock me off the wheel. Anyhow, oof, jeez. Anyhow, oof. One thing that I'm actually really impressed about though is it's really moist down there underneath the wheel. And uh, oof, it does um, grip really well with the right, uh, with the wide tire and doesn't get stuck in the mud. But right now, uh, I think we go left here and this is usually where I test off-road capabilities of wheels. So let's see how the M10 will perform here. Oof, big downhill slope here on sand. Downhill, no problem. Really holds well on the sand, actually. I'm quite impressed. <laughs> Such a small wheel, too. Now we go up. Let's see if, had, if it has enough grip for a small off-road incline. Can be difficult, but seems to hold it now. Let's go here on the right. Oh boy, struggling. <laughs> You can hear that the motor is in pain. Well, it's doing it. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty impressive for such, I won't do that. <laughs> That's a big incline. Pretty impressive for such a small device. Uh, let's see if we can go up here. Oh, we can. We need to turn. Well, actually, actually, it's not too bad. Like this is sand. Usually I, I just dig myself down here. Okay. Okay, it's uh, never mind. <laughs> but it's still quite impressive for such a small wheel to be able to resist a bit of off road. And we go. It's nice to also stay on one place, not too hard to do that. And we go there actually, yeah. You can see now the train tracking is really pushing me off to the left side. The wheel wants to stay perpendicular to the ground. <laughs> now the real off-road begins by this incline. It's not too steep, but uh, just soil is a lot harder on the motor than a concrete slope, especially with those bumps. But oh my God, it actually does that. You need to grip tight on the wheel, but does it? So actually, the M104 can do a little bit of off-road. It's it's a pain, like you shouldn't do it anyways, I think. I mean, if you want it, do it. But there's tons of wheels that do off-road better than that. I guess there's a tiny justification now for me for the off-road tire, but believe me, oh, pretty much every other wheel at this price point will probably do all of that better in general in some regard, but I'm still quite impressed that it actually can do my usual trails that I do on bigger wheels. Now oh, that's too boring. <laughs> nice to turn around. All right guys, so with that said, what is my conclusion about the ride of the M104? And first of all, I have to still give a shout out to Bigode for making a wheel which is so small still no other manufacturer dared to make a 10 inch wheel uh, in general i think this is a novelty product i think for most cases if you just travel around the city if you even want to do freestyle tricks or if you want a small wheel just to you know go to grocery runs etc i would say that objectively speaking a king song 14s 14d 16s is better for that just better trolley handle better lift switch better safety as well, more stability. Like it goes on and on. It's more difficult to fall off from the wheel. But in some areas, the M104 does excel. It's extremely nimble. Like the turning radius of this thing is nuts. 
If you have a very densely populated area, this will be the most stable thing to ride slowly. And because of that, this wheel is actually really easy to learn on. So especially on, in this initial stage of riding, uh, where you need this low speed stability, I think the M104 does perform really well. It's good for kids too, because obviously it's small, but it does lose a lot of its practicality because of the bigger size. So I can't put this thing anymore into my backpack, which is a big bummer. Uh, the range is great. I tested it at around 40 kilometers, huge range. Uh, so actually can go places. And maybe that's why Bonheur sur Seine likes it so much with his personal setup. If you know French, check out his video about tuning the M104. If you want the smallest thing, if you want the uh, you know, most nimble thing, then yes, uh, the M104 is pretty much the only choice you have right now on the market. Don't be fooled by its size though, because it's actually very difficult to tame the M104, especially at higher speeds. You might catch wobbles, you might just have unexpected turns, you might overpower it. This wheel, despite its small size, requires a lot, a lot of learning to feel comfortable on it and to ride safely on it. So with that said, this person is impressed. And if you're still here, <laughs> leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.